What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is beating five scam arcade games with science. This is of course a Mark Rober video. We have checked out Mark Rober before. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the video was. I'm pretty sure it was a Glitter Bombs. Oh, we set up okay. a Glitter Bombs. I, d I have personally seen a few of his other channels like the NFL Kick and stuff like that. Like other, other, yeah. other videos before. Um, I don't I've think really you seen have. Glitter bombs, I think. But I think, yeah, I think it was the glitter bombs we did on the channel. Like I say, it mixes a little bit because I've done a few others. Um, but I'm keen for this one. This one came out not too long ago, I believe. Uh, so smash that button if you want us to check out more Mark Rover content. Glitter bombs. 2.0 is it's on the list. It's on the, I think it's in the next week or so, I think. Soon it is on the list. I know it's a long video like this one, but it is definitely on the list. So smash that like button. Let us in the comments if you like that kind of content. If I seem out of it a little bit, I do apologise. I've done basically a 5k today. Uh, it's, it's a 5k, but it was a marathon relay bit, wasn't it? So Yeah. And then a few beers as well. So I'm a little bit out of it. So Millie's here to carry, carry the show, if that's what you call it. Yay. <laughs> smash the like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. And are you ready? I'm keen for this because I always know that the arcade games are like... Yeah, you make me spend a lot of money on arcade games and I never win. Well, I win eventually. No, you won. You did win once, but by the time you won me the teddy, you may as well just bought it for I me. Sp cheaper. I spent like 30 quid yeah. trying to win this teddy on the claw machines, but eventually I did get there. You did. But it was Millie's fault because she's like, I really want it. I really want yeah, but it. Also, you get quite competitive. So oh, you yeah. Like, well, so you like, when you put your mind set on it, you're like, yeah, I'm going to get this teddy. Definitely. I think I'm fine not going for it, but once I've spent a bit of money going for it, I'd waste more money trying to get it. Could have spent half of it and got the family. Not even half, like maybe like a twentieth of it. <laughs> <laughs> smash that like button, guys. Smash the subscribe button. Let's check out beating five scam arcade games with science. What we got? This is me entering an arcade wearing just your normal everyday backpack. Only technically, is it's it normal, not though? your normal everyday backpack because when I set it here and then nonchalantly load a few balls into the water <laughs> bottle, then it plays the game like a good robot should. And I uh, would not. Yeah, Mark Rober is just next level. He's it's, next level. That's pretty cool. But what if I told you I need similar backpacks, not just for ski ball, but for this game and this one, basically coming up with contraptions what? to absolutely dominate five of the most common arcade games, including some hacks that cost less than a dollar and actually work to set world record ticket payouts. But we also secretly recorded data from a bunch of different arcades. So I'll teach you the strategies to beat the games that give out the most tickets, along with showing you the five games We've checked out two of these. We did the carnival games one. I, do you know what? In my head, I was just thinking, I'm sure we did one. Yeah, did when the um, baseball pitcher went to it and he was throwing the yeah. game. Because I remember this. I remember putting the clowns on it and saying, we love the clowns. Yeah, but just the only reason I remember is because it were the secretly watching it because they got all the data from it and that's what I remember yeah. it from. Yeah, we definitely did that video as well. Mm. We discovered our actual scams. Don't ever step foot in another arcade again until you've watched this video in its entirety. Let's get started. Like the sounds. Now, admittedly, the genesis we for this video them. came when I was using my no, over engineered bowling not. ball that I could control just by leaning. Because I thought, what if I took that same concept and applied it to mini golf? And while that idea could be really useful for getting a good you golf score. Golf. There's just no real payoff for my efforts. Which focused my attention to the holy grail of any mini golf course, the arcade. It was time to recoup all the allowance money I've lost as a kid, starting first with ski ball. And before we really see it in action, let me first explain how it works. Because if I'm you take bit. away the backpack, you'll find a Frankenstein version of a softball pitching machine that we chopped up and modified so it runs just off batteries. Then there's a solenoid here that makes sure the ski balls get released one at a time. So if you just turn it on, then we put a ball in here, it fires the ball like this. This. The coolest part here though is when it's placed in the backpack, you roll this pocket up to reveal the ball exit and then place this water bottle here as a clever disguise to load up to three balls at a time. Now of course if you don't have a secret robot backpack, here's how you win this game as a mere human. For starters, if you watch the pros play, yes there are ski ball pros, they actually- Hey, there's pros? Maybe I should sign up. I'm pretty good at this game, you're useless. Yeah, but you don't ever get the 10,000s on it. Oh, yeah, I do. Oh, I do. I always end up 100%. in that one. The, is it the 1,000 one? The one yeah, the, first one. the lowest one, yeah. I was just saying, I was just saying it as it is. Aim for the 4,000 point hole. This actually makes sense because even if your throw is a little too weak or a little too strong, you're still getting significant points. A common mistake is to take the bait and go all or nothing by aiming for the small 10,000 point hole yeah, in the corner. Yeah, I just hit it. The pros aim for this only That's in desperate situations where they're behind and they need big points to make a comeback for the win. 
The other big tip is to brace your leg against the base of the machine in the same spot each I'm time. Trying and this then try next and time. only move your arm, which will make your throws more repeatable and accurate because you're reducing the variables that could lead to error. So if you want to win, just follow these tips and practice a bunch. Or you could just go with my round. That's what I'm going to do next time. I'm going to make the wall ball next time. Different trajectories sometimes, though. So then when you're all done dominating, or if you think one of the workers might be getting suspicious, you can just pick up the backpack at any point and walk away with a bunch of tickets on your card. Up next is one of my personal favorites, basketball. In this case, the backpack is being used just to smuggle the special mechanism inside. Because to the untrained eye, this is just a normal basketball, when in fact, it's a robot in disguise. Now before I show you exactly how it works, you first need to understand how these games work. Just underneath each rim is an infrared laser and a detector. And then on the front of the rim, on the other side of that metal plate, is a reflector. So when the laser beam shines straight forward, it bounces off the reflector, and then the sensor's like, yep, I can see the beam. So when a ball goes through the hoop, it breaks the beam, and the sensor's like, aha, I didn't see it for a second. At which point it tells the game to add two points to your total, because that means you must have scored. In engineering, we call this a beam break detector, and it's the exact same concept you have as a safety feature on your garage door. Okay. So if you really want to destroy the high score here, the ball needs to break the beam then somehow get out of the way so the beam reconnects and then come back and break the beam again over and over again as fast as possible. But if you think about it, the whole ball doesn't need to actually get out of the way, just the just part a little in bit. front of the beam itself. And how might you do that? Well, one way is to 3D print the bottom hemisphere of a basketball in two parts attached together through some linear guide rods, then add a battery, microcontroller, and servo motor so the bottom part of the shell can translate up and down. This way it would reconnect the beam and then break it over and over again and register two points every time that happens. Now you just need a way to grab the rim so you can hang out there while you perform these shenanigans. And if you have some pneumatic pistons connected to a mini pressure intake controlled by a solenoid valve triggered by an RF remote, and then you could shoot the ball normally, and then with one push of a button, piston rods would shoot out and grab the rim, and then once mischief was managed, you trigger the remote again, and they would retract. Now if you just add another 3D printed hemisphere on top, then glue on the actual basketball skin, then when you put it all together, it would look something like this. Now if you don't happen to have a robo ball, here's a few tips that will help you get the high score for this game. Now, the most important one. thing is I you don't want to waste time waiting for a ball to roll down to you. Oh, and that's since why these I hate. games normally come in pairs, just swipe your card on both games and then temporarily borrow the second set of balls. Now this will yeah. give you plenty more than you need, so just keep the balls that are the least inflated. Now you start the game and get into a rhythm where you finish your shot with one hand and then start grabbing or replacing the ball with your other hand before your first shot has even gone. Oh, yeah, I do if that the rhythm is close and you want to get really extreme, you can just go with a two-handed shooting strategy <laughs> like this guy. But I'm not my strategy good. is no match for my spherical transformer because when I'm ready to go, I just shoot the ball with one hand and then hit the remote right as it's about to go in. And now as the ball just sits there articulating, I simply watch those sweet, sweet points rack themselves right on up. Wow. Next level. More robots next level. <laughs> and then as soon as time's up, I just hit the remote again and the piston rods are tracked. And while no one's the wiser, I've now injured my way to a buttload of tickets and a new lifetime high score. Next up is a really popular game called Quick Drop, where you hit this button to release these ping pong balls at the right oh, moment. Nice. And if you get all 50 ping pong balls, I've never seen that one before. Have the... you? No, I've seen it. When we say we got this, we got one arcade in Jersey, and we got the other ones, but we haven't seen this one before, have we? 22 seconds allotted without missing any shots, then you hit the mega jackpot. But the thing is, to get all 50 balls in before the time runs out, there's essentially no margin for human error, which is good news for me because robot backpacks don't make human errors. Yeah, who makes human errors these up, days? I can just set the backpack down and it self-registers right in place. <laughs> the trick here is we 3D printed an exact negative replica of the button housing on the game. And this piston rod that pokes through and pushes the button on the game is attached to this solenoid that's controlled by this Arduino microcontroller and it tells it the exact timing needed to beat the game. Now if you're trying this on your own, here's what you need to know. To successfully do this in 22 seconds, you have to drop four balls in each bucket, except in two buckets, you've got to drop five. Now dropping five into these two buckets isn't impossible, but the timing's so tight, it's really hard to pull off without them hitting the rim and bouncing out. 
Now the jackpot starts at 500 tickets and every time someone loses it goes up by two tickets and each time that happens the game gives you just a little more total time on the clock. And so if you ever see the jackpot at more than 625 tickets enough time is now on the clock where you only need four balls per bucket to win and it's definitely worth trying it a few times because that makes it so much easier to pull off. Alternatively okay. if you're too impatient to wait for the jackpot to rise up you can just go to school for six years to get a degree in mechanical engineering and do it this way. He doesn't even, he doesn't even look like he's and then like even covering all, 554 it. You know? I he's just standing there smug, just watching the game play by itself. And then tickets were all the way out. Yeah. But, <laughs> but like, it's not even like covered, like standing I'd be like this. But I'd make you look more guilty, I reckon. But then just standing there while the balls are dropping and I was Yeah, but like, whoa, the machine's messing up. I don't know, I've just got my butt back here, you know? <laughs> Delicious tickets are being added to your account. You can just inconspicuously walk away with your backpack in tow. For our next game, we've got the perennial arcade favorite, well. Air Hockey. Oh, I love this Air Hockey. I'm just you're so you hard at them. The I'm just, I just a kid. Can't win. I am just a little kid. There's a hole in the bag for a camera to look out through. Then stripping away the backpack, you can see that camera connects to the oh brains. Oh my god, it's a machine. What play case, is it? It's a Raspberry Pi, which is basically like a mini computer instead of just an Arduino microcontroller like all the other builds have used so far. The reason this one needs a bit more brain power is because it uses computer vision to track the puck, and based off the trajectory, it makes a prediction, then sends instructions to rotate this servo, which is attached to an arm that moves the paddle and protects the goal. Nice. And perhaps my favorite part of this build is that it obviously won't work if the whole thing is sliding and moving all around. So we need to anchor it down securely into position, but we need to do that quickly and discreetly. Our solution here is a pair of neodymium toggle magnets. So if you simply turn both of these knobs, the rare earth magnets move into position and anchor it to the steel frame of the air hockey table, and it's basically cemented in place as you can see here. As for the human strategy here, playing air hockey might seem like total chaos, but there are four simple tricks that will pretty much guarantee you can beat any casual player. All right, so this is where you look away. I'll learn the tricks. And I'm gonna lose still. I even <laughs> I lose anyway. So it's not like, like you the paddle like this. You don't have to do like that. This. Doing that allows you to really whip the paddle around and gain extra speed on your shots. The second is that for your default defensive position, you want your paddle to be out here, not right up against the goal right here. That's because this cuts down the angle, and you only have to move the paddle back and forth this far to protect the whole goal. That makes sense. Back and forth this far if you're against the edge. This is the same reason goalies will come out of the goal if there's a breakaway in soccer. Even for a bang shot, you now. You just have to move the paddle a small distance diagonally back like this. So your paddle should essentially always stay inside a triangle like this when you're playing defense. And when you watch professionals play, yes, there are air hockey professionals, <laughs> you'll see them employ it. both these first two tips. The third trick you'll also see is they try and play for possession. You want to try and cushion your opponent's shot and gain possession of the puck so you can set up your own shot, which leads to the this? last tip. Mix up the straight shots and bank shots, but try and practice at least one trick shot like this one where you hit the puck down into the corner and then when it rebounds back to you, you hit the bank shot for the win. Here's what that looks like. I think when you're pulling off tricks, like double hit trick shots on like ice hockey, then you can't be playing it in arcade. You got that's when you got to be joining a league. You know what I mean? Can't be doing that in arcade, yeah, surely. Sure. Now the real benefit of my backpack system is you can be playing your opponent, but then when you get a phone call or you have to attend to some other important matters, your goal is in safe hands. <laughs> And then at your own leisure, you can eventually just come back and finish things off. No way. Then with the victory securely in hand, you just disengage the two toggle magnets with a twist, and you're good to go. And finally, we've got the ultimate test of strength, I hate this the one. punching bag game. Now for this one... I don't need a machine, you know. <laughs> I'm weak ass. <laughs> I to make it more interesting, I wanted to find and you challenge one? the guy no, I've never. whose Are muscles you? look the least like mine. So it's I stepped up first... Good. <laughs> and rocked the 678 out of a possible 999. But then he stepped up and rocked an 877. And since that's bigger than 678, the trash talking commenced. Maybe if you spent a little less time at the computer, a little more time in the weight room. <laughs> so that was disappointing, but lucky for me, I had a trick up my sleeve. Like, actually, because that's a fake arm in order to disguise this. That was still a little inadequate. It's basically a bionic punching arm powered by two spring-loaded pistons. To set the springs, we use a threaded rod and a drill, and once under tension, they're held in place with a quick-release mechanism I can trigger with my finger at the exact moment I want to punch a thing. It makes it sound so easy. 
Facing And I would classify the initial test in the lab as encouraging. Now it's important to note to play by the rules for this game, there's no side punching, pushing, running, kicking, or headbutting. But you'll notice there's no rule against spring-loaded piston punching gloves. So now that my moment of sheer domination had arrived, I stepped up. What's going to get 538, okay. which was less than 877, <laughs> which was disappointing. And in hindsight, I should have known it's really hard to compete with the human body in terms of things like punching and throwing because we're just so efficient with those mechanics and I have to sacrifice a lot of the speed and momentum of my own arm body system when I'm wearing that heavy wrist mounted puncher. But you know what? I'm a fighter and what I lack in muscle mass, I make up for in tenacity. So out of curiosity, I took a closer look to see how the machine actually works. And it turns out it has a beam break sensor just like the basketball game. So as that odd shaped metal piece which is attached to the axle and punching bag rotates around, the beam has this tiny window to hit the sensor. You can see the sensor in the front view here. So the game cleverly measures how many milliseconds the sensor sees the beam for, and from that, it infers how quickly the bag is rotating on the axle, and therefore how hard it was punched. And this gave me an idea. So I went to the prize counter and redeemed a few of my jackpot tickets I'd been stocking Why not? Love in Pez's. exchange for a Pez dispenser. Ooh. Step one was to unwrap... So that. You do love Pez's, though, don't you? I do love Pez's. Every time, like, a couple people have sent them on a password for, like, your niece to survive, and you'd be like, can I just eat them? I'm like, no. But for them, yeah, can I just eat them? But no. But like, we went to the shop and we just bought this, just the sweets. Let's, let's not say we. Hi. Yeah, you there you go. You bought them for me, though. Yeah, but they for me. <laughs> eat some of the Pez, because they're just delicious. And then for step See? two, I removed the head, like cut the arcade card like this, and then taped it here, and then went and tracked down my new friend. My theory was that if I extended the Pez dispenser and modified card out like this, and then let go, the force of the spring would retract the card, and it would break the beam so fast, the machine would think it was an insanely fast punch. But would it actually work? And it turns out... It absolutely does because I maxed out the machine. So, uh, yeah. Use this information responsibly, kids. Now, a few years ago, I made a video where I visited the carnival and collected data on That's all the watch. games and then yeah. used physics to expose which carnival games were rigged and then showed how to beat them. So this time yes, around, instead of the carnival, I once again bribed some family friends with unlimited Slurpees in exchange for them collecting a bunch of data at some local arcades. And in addition to uncovering which games were scams, which I'll cover in just a minute, here's what we discovered. For starters, the most popular games in the arcade were the redemption games, as opposed to the experience games. And here's what I mean by that. Redemption games are the games where the goal is to win tickets. So like the coin pushers or this Plinko game or spin the wheel. On the other end of the spectrum, you have experience games like air hockey, skee ball, or racing games. It's a trade-off because the games on this side of the spectrum give out more tickets, but it's not as much about the fun of the experience. And then in the middle of the- Which one are you? Which would you prefer? Experience games or redemption games? Oh, I think it's definitely redemption for me. Yeah, more tickets to the sweets. But then I do like, I don't know, because I do like the um, the clown game. Yeah, I'm always experienced games. I'm there to have fun. If I don't get made, I'm put, I even on know, Redemptions, actually. it's just I luck think anyway. I think both, because with the experience, I like to go on the car, don't I? True. Yeah, definitely. You drag me on the air hockey. I like the air hockey. It's fun. I, I'm definitely experienced games. I'm the there to have fun. The thing is, I don't like the experienced games when I'm against you. That's because I like to win. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> Spectrum, you have games like the ping pong drop or hit the clown that have middle of the road ticket payouts, but they're also middle of the road fun to play. Now, since the games on this side were a lot more popular, they earn a lot more money for the arcade, even when you factor in the higher ticket payouts. We found that for a medium sized arcade on a busy day, the less popular games were played 25 times and the more popular ones could be played up to 250 times wow. or more. How much of a average difference? game play of $1, That's that means each game makes 25 to 250 dollars per day or about seven to seventy thousand dollars per year and finally we found Each that if game. your sole goal was to win tickets coin pusher games like this avengers oh, one seem to be the best game. return on investment yeah. but honestly you can just ask one of the workers there who are hanging out making minimum wage and are probably pretty chill because chances are they'll just tell you which ones they regularly see pay out the best all right so finally let's get to the real juicy part and talk about which games we discovered were basically scams now i actually have some 
experience in this area because a few years back, I built my original backpack arcade robot to dominate this game. Basically, it would sense the light turning on a few lights in front of the jackpot light, then it would hit the button with sub millisecond precision, and then we would touch nothing in between runs, and yet it would alternate between missing both short and long. In other words, the timing on the jackpot light doesn't it's match up with the duration it's lit, and it's very different from all the other lights. You can actually test this yourself by picking a random light, and you'll find miraculously you could somehow hit that random light every single time you try. Now this caused me to dig a little deeper, and after a bit of research, I was able to locate a copy of the owner's manual, at which point I discovered the arcade owner could just manually set how often a jackpot should be won. That's ridiculous, so around, that is insane. What so other say, games were essentially on. running yeah. the same scam, yeah, where you think it's a game of skill, but in reality, the arcade owner is controlling when a jackpot's won. And as it turns out, this really popular game called Stacker employs the same trick. This other really popular game, Keymaster, and this Cut the Rope game are also, in fact, running the same scam. In all three cases, I was able to get a hold of a copy of their owner's manual, and each one has some language around how the arcade owner can specify how often a jackpot occurs. I also found many, but not all, claw machines have language around how it will close with full strength, but then back off to a much weaker strength of whatever is set by the owner. For this reason, it's best to it try to the closest to you can you have these sayings in there which is like yeah it just means they're definitely not going to win unless they're that lucky one you know what mm. I mean? and it's not advertised at all it's mental but they get away with that you know yeah. what i mean because you just put pulling money into it expecting the same amount of chance every time yeah but it's not to minimize the amount of time it's held in the claws. And I call these games scams because they present themselves as winnable games of skill, when in reality, it's essentially a random dice roll that is heavily stacked against you. And just like at the carnival, the most lucrative games are those where people overestimate their chances of winning because they seem to get close, but they don't quite win. In gambling psychology, this is known as the near miss effect, and it will lead to increased play of the slot machine. But this is much worse than a slot machine because at least in that case, you know it doesn't matter how you pull the lever because it's random chance and on top of that those games are regulated so there is a minimum payout required by law so for every dollar for example put into a slot machine they have to pay out at least 80 cents back to the players oh wow but for the new arcade that. games i just mentioned the default payout rate is on average 20 cents for every dollar you spend but a shady arcade owner could basically set that to zero and no wow. one would know and that would be perfectly legal and that's especially messed up because it's primarily played by kids so if you remember nothing else Else, just try and pick games that avoid any sort of digital winning element that can be rigged because in those cases You just never really know where your chances are these games However, are all great options to at least have a better sense of your actual odds of winning I've checked I look like all of these and what you see yeah. is exactly what you get and I can vouch Some arcades are more fair about this than others For example, my home arcade here refuses to carry any of the games that can be rigged against you Which I think is pretty cool. However, I like if they that. happen to see this my only suggestion is that moving forward They should probably institute a no backpacks allowed policy <laughs> and perhaps also don't let people redeem tickets for pez dispensers this is a dad finder it was made Subscribe by a dad who's also a pilot so his kids always know which direction and how far away he is when he's traveling around the world Wait, and this contraption feeds your dog with the pull of a lever and went on to get successfully funded as a six-figure kickstarter campaign so what do these and tens of thousands of more projects just like them have in common well they were all designed by folks who took my creative engineering class at studio.com the best part about being a maker and an engineer is you can come we up with- We won't carry that on because I think it is just him advertising, which is awesome by the way. Please go and check Mark Robo out. He's legit, he's ridiculously smart. Yeah. As you guys can see if you watch this video or any of his videos, it is incredible. So please go and check his channel out. 99% of you guys will have checked him out yeah. anyway, but if you haven't, go and check him out because you could learn something new or like you say, you could be inspired by him, join his class and do something amazing. Yeah. Smash the like button here guys, smash the subscribe button. Did you enjoy that? Yeah, I'm not going to the arcade again though. Why? On those games that I know are scams. Okay, go ahead. I'm still going to do it. Because again, the fun... It's still fun, isn't it? I do the basketball. I, I mainly just play the basketball one, the air mm. hockey one, which is more, not really about getting tickets, but more about fun. Yeah. You know? Smash the like button guys, smash the subscribe and watch the video. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you legends in the next one. Peace.